What's up, guys? Welcome back. It is vlog number seven, starting things off here in Reno before getting a chance to head down to Los Angeles, California. Haven't been back there for about two years, so looking forward to playing at the Commerce and the Gardens Casino on this trip. And going to check out a Giants Angels game. That'll be fun as well. I uh, wanted to start things off with some viewer reaction coming in after the last vlog, in which I had a chance to travel Highway 50, the loneliest road in America throughout the state of Nevada, and shoot a vlog in the process. And uh, a lot of people seem to enjoy it, so I appreciate that. So a couple of comments that have come in so far, starting off with Scott, who says, I live on Highway 50 in Cannon City, Colorado. Oh. I did find it cool that a viewer to this vlog lives on the road that I was just talking about in the previous vlog. Jermaine Johnson writes in as well, and he uh, says, great video, like the fact that poker is taking you elsewhere than Reno and the views of the areas you're visiting. Along those same lines, Lozell writes in and says, Ben, you absolutely crushed this vlog. I would like to nominate this one for best vlog episode of the year. Too kind of you to say, Lozell. Then John Doe decides to chime in on the hand that I talked about where I lost to the guy with the Octo Crab, the 8-3. And he says, unfortunately, the idiot with the 8-3 will then eventually donate the money he won to the rest of the table other than you. I've played with many guys like that. I can confirm your suspicions. That's pretty much exactly what happened after that. Shockingly, I have not seen much of that guy since that hand. And then Snow Monkey, he writes in and says, Every time I start watching a Deech vlog, I keep expecting him to throw it back to the studio to get an update on traffic and weather after the break. Come on, bro. What do you mean by that? I'm not sure what you're talking about. And we'll update the website to colotv.com if you want to keep up to date on all the fires burning in our area. David Shannon. Trying to make it over I-80 westbound here today. We'll send it back to you, Shannon. Now, that's doubled to 300,000, showing the effect that it's had. Josh and Becca. And for more on that, let's go over to the Reno Sparks Convention Center with Cola White News Now's Sydney Schofield. Hey, Sid, we'll have coverage on our evening shows. Shannon? So if you ever want to get in on this segment, we won't do it every vlog, but I'll try to work it in. Just leave a comment down below, and I will work them into the vlog when I can. And do me a favor, follow me on Instagram, at Ben Deach. Now, Let's get to it, heading down to Los Angeles, staying at the Commerce for a weekend of baseball and poker action. time being back here since October of 2002 when the Giants played the Angels in the World Series. I had the chance to attend game six of that series. Giants fans already know what I'm talking about. They had a five-run lead going into the seventh inning. Still managed to lose due in part to a Scott Spezio three-run home run. The only good news about that was I know I will never attend a game more painful than that one as long as I live. capable of being for the first two and a half hours of play. Got stuck about 300 early, but then I got an interesting hand when uh, we got a limp and the button makes it 25. 
and I'm in the small blind that I look down at Queen Jack of Spades. I make the call and the lipper call. So it's 75 in the pot, or three ways to a flop that comes out. Jack, Jack, six with one spade. I check, hoping to put in a check raise here, but uh, there's an old Chinese proverb that states, you can only check raise when your opponent bets. So unfortunately, nobody bets here. The limper checks and the button checks. The turn comes the nine of spades, giving me backdoor spades. I lead out for 50 here, trying to value target a hand like pocket eights, something in that range that I could get called by. The limper folds, but the button does call. The river comes another six, giving me top full house. I'm still thinking he might have a hand like pocket eights or something, so I go ahead and bet 120. And he thinks about it for about 20 seconds. Alright, so as you saw, for the first time I was nailed for filming in a casino. Kind of thought that would happen, so it's only fair. But, finish that hand, I end up betting 120 on the river of Jack Jack 669, and I get called. So, stuck only now about 75 bucks after a couple hours of nothing here in Hawaiian Gardens. All right, back upstairs here at The Commerce on uh, this Monday. Had a chance to jump in a 5-5 no limit game at 8 a.m. on a Monday morning in which there were two games going. That's the beauty of LA. Not too often you're gonna find two games and good games at that on a Monday morning at 8, but that is the case here in LA. But I wanna to talk to a legend in the LA poker game. And uh, for those of you who have really paid attention to poker podcasts in recent years, you probably know my guest, but for those of you who have not, a little backstory on him. I don't actually know his real last name, but he goes by the name Lyman. He was a big 2 plus 2 poster back in the day. That is a forum website where people post about poker-related topics. I have never been big on it, but I know a lot of people who are. So he became known there, and then he went on Bart Hansen's podcast, and uh, he just crushed it. All right, that was probably some of the best poker-related media that's ever been done. Lyman and Bart Hansen talking about poker. They did that for about six or seven podcasts, and they were all unbelievable. So as a result, I then had Lyman on my old radio show a couple of times. I would talk poker a few times here and there. And when I would do that, I would bring him on, and he just crushed it every time. He was just great talking about the realities of cash game poker because he doesn't do tournaments. He's a big cash game grinder. Now only really plays PLO, but uh, he's played all the games. You'll notice the hair, uh, and he tells me he does that to get action, or at least I've heard him say that. I didn't ask him about it this time, but uh, in years past, I've heard him say that he has the sideshow Bob look to get action. People look at him and think he's crazy, but in reality, he's a tight player, so, uh, so that kind of uh, has worked for him over the years, and it's given him uh, definitely a unique image, to say the least. Uh, so, one of my favorite guests, Abe Lyman, joining me earlier at The Commerce. All right, I did not want to make this trip to LA without talking to the man who, as those of you who heard my old radio show know, does not mess around when it comes to telling it like it is in poker, and no one really articulates the reality of cash game poker better than our guest, the one and only Abe Lyman. Hey, come on, I better it, get myself gussied up. Hey, you know, uh, it, is good, it is good to see you again, my friend. Hey, and, you um, too, man. It's good to be here at the Commerce, and uh, the games, uh, you know, remain ridiculously good here, and I presume that's uh, what brings you uh, here again. What are, we, what are we playing today, some PLO? Uh, what's on the schedule? Yeah, well, I uh, host the Pot Limit Omaha game here, and it's basically the only PLO game that goes daily in Los Angeles, so... This is where I play like 100%. 100% of my time I play 5, 5, 10, pot level Omaha. Maybe like 5%, no limit, like when the games are full, and maybe another like, every now and then I play a high stakes limit because the games, those games are still really, really good. But it's really hard to get a seat in them, so usually I don't. Now, uh, remind people why 
you are 100% cash games and you hate tournaments, which I have now fallen <laughs> in that same boat. Uh, but uh, give us kind of the appeal to that, uh, whether it's just the games here in LA or just your thoughts on tournaments in general. Well, tournaments are just very bad for the poker economy. That's why I don't like them. I mean, I don't, if they were good for the poker economy, I mean, I don't, I don't have like any aversion. But the problem with tournaments is you can't make a living being a tournament poker player. And so there's really no room for professionals in tournaments unless you're gonna like stake and swap and trade and sell and all this other goddamn nonsense. And even then, like if you're an elite player, maybe you have an ROI of 40% or something. So at a 40% ROI, you basically can only play 1Ks and above and try to make a little money. The variance is gonna be giant. But that's 400, like, let's say you're, you're one of the, an elite player with an ROI of 40%. Um, and you're playing a 1K. So your expected value in that turn is $400. And the amount of time that you're gonna spend in that tournament on average is probably something like 12 hours or something, maybe more like the way that they're all run now, like deep stack really, really long, maybe like 18 hours. That's, that's, a, that's your average. On the times that you actually make a final table or something, you're looking at like three days. Because they have a day one, on these 1Ks they usually have a day one, a day two, and then a final table. So if you take 18 hours then, or, 12, or if you want to say it's less and say it's 14 hours or whatever, and then divide it into the $400 that your expected value is, your hourly rate is just microscopic. It's basically a complete waste of time. And these are 1Ks. <laughs> this is like, we're not talking about nice. the daily nooner or whatever <laughs> other, other shit that these fucking poker, <laughs> these online pro, or not whatever tournament pro guys are playing. Uh, it's just a huge time sink. And whereas in the cash game, your hour, if you're good enough to have an elite tournament ROI, then it's an immense waste of time to play tournaments. Mm. Because that means that you have the mental skills, the work ethic, and the, the drive to make easily three or four times that in cash games. Uh, now let's talk about cash games here in LA. The Commerce obviously is the place where you're gonna find the most of them, but what are your thoughts on the other places? Like do you go to the, the bike and the gardens casinos to play, or what would you uh, recommend to people if they're heading out to LA to play? Well, I mean, it's just, if, if you're like a, a small, low stakes player, and you know, you're a recreational guy and just wanna have fun, they're all the same, mm. to be honest. Uh, I mean, I, 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 to be completely honest, like, they probably have more comfortable chairs at the bike and they probably have better food at Hawaiian Gardens. Um, so like, if you're just gonna play, if you're just like t to have fun playing like one, two, no limit, or even up to like, maybe like, four, eight limit or whatever, you know, like standard Las Vegas, Reno type stuff, uh, go to any of them. Go to the one closest to your hotel, basically. But if you wanna play for real and make real money, you can only come to Commerce. Literally no place else. You can only come here. <laughs> wow. Because the other ones, the, the type of games at five, 10 and above are sporadic. And you don't know when you show up if there's gonna be a game. Mm. And so you're just wasting, if you're not local, you're just wasting time because you're gonna be driving to these places or going to these places and not sure what you're gonna get. Even if they show that a game's going, it might be all house players. It's sort of a sort of hit or miss situation at the other casinos. Whereas if you're gonna be playing 5, 10, 10, 20, in the no limit, pot limit range, 40, 80, 60, 120, 100, 200, the limit range, you have to come to Commerce. There's no place else. So it's like, fuck the chairs, <laughs> fuck the food. If you're here to gamble, it's only Commerce. If you want a comfortable chair and good food, you go wherever the hell you want. It makes no difference. Uh, and you, uh, you've you said before that uh, you don't play when you go to Vegas. Uh, no. wh what are the biggest differences between the poker games in Vegas and here in Los Angeles? Well, Vegas is a, is um, like a weekend city, you know? So even the regulars that play there professionally, you know, people like Two Hats. You know, you know what happened to Two Hats now? No, He's I- He's in gay porn. I, yeah, I knew that surprised you. I'm not joking. You're fucking with me. I'm not joking. Look it up. Wait. There's a, he has a, he, like his, his boyfriend is, a, is in gay porn and he did a coming out video with his boyfriend and now they're doing like little like flirty videos on YouTube. 100% Two Hats is in gay porn within the next six months. Two Hats is this guy, he's this young kid <laughs> poker player who's, who's, who uh, I actually saw come to Reno one time and I texted Abe about it, I was laughing, but he, there was a legendary podcast that this man did 
that I call King Little Little. Yeah, King Little that's, that, I hope that still exists somewhere. Because and, if, you, if you haven't heard it, it's the funniest damn thing that I've ever heard in my life. And I don't know how. Like, how does this guy play poker when he can never spot a bluff? Like, uh, you, you had him hook, line, and singer this yeah. whole time. Uh, I, I, I almost drove off the road driving to Vegas to <laughs> this damn thing. Uh, anyway, so, okay. Well, he's so a, a system player. A two hats update. I love it. I didn't yeah, expect that. Didn't expect that. This. All right, well, that's good to know. Um, but the reason I mentioned yeah. that is because he would, he, he had like worked out the exact hours to play and the exact casinos to play to maximize his hourly rate. In Vegas. Considering the fact, like you said, like he's oblivious to everything, all his surroundings. So he, he was a, a, the, the consummate bum hunter. And so it's basically a weekend city. If you go there on weekdays, you're going to play with a bunch of regulars and... People in Las Vegas, the regulars in Las Vegas are poor. I mean, that's just the way it is. It's, yeah. like, it's a very poor city. They're poor people. I'm not, not saying they're bad people, but they're poor people. There's no money there. So when you play with regulars there, they're fucking scrapping for every penny, and they, they order the dollar and 98 cent fucking steak and eggs dinner, and if they get, charge a dollar and 99 cent, they raise a huge fuss. It's like a whole ordeal, you know? They're counting their, their, the, the, the little comps on their little card. But in Los Angeles, the regulars, I'm not talking about People who come here on vacation or whatever, the regulars, the guy who's playing every single day are rich. So it's just lots of rich people. And rich people are who you want to play poker against, really. Huh. And I, well, I, I was the only American guy in the game today, too. Yeah. There is also <laughs> that. So that can be uh, that can be what it is. Yeah, uh, just on top of the vacation. We get the vacationers, too, just like Las Vegas. Not to the same level as Las Vegas. I'm not going to be. But we get the vacationers, too. But I'm talking about just the regulars, guys who show up every single day. And uh, when you start to add up how much money they lose per year, it's mind-boggling. It's just mind-boggling. Uh, and there's dozens and dozens of them. And that's why LA is the poker capital of the world. I mean, you have, if you want to play poker for a living, you basically have to live here. So uh, uh, what about um, the state of online poker in California? Do you see that changing anytime soon? Have you heard anything about that? Uh, people, there's rumblings all the time, even amongst like, because I, I mean, I talk to all the casino owners and stuff, so I've been around so long, I know everybody, there's always rumblings, but it doesn't look like it's going to take hold anytime mm. soon. Um, at one point, the casinos really wanted it, but then once they saw what happened in New Jersey, they sort of said, ah, fuck it, we don't want it, because it, it didn't actually bring money in like they said it was going to bring in. It brought in like basically like a tiny percentage of what the projections were. And that tiny percentage all drew out of the brick and mortar casinos because the brick and mortar casino business went down, the online business went up, and it didn't actually be a net benefit to anybody. So what the, these brick and mortar casinos make so much freaking money for these guys. The last thing they want to do is introduce a wild card. And what used to look like a sure thing, like online poker is a sure thing. It's a, a online gaming. It's a way to make extra money. Now it doesn't look like a sure thing anymore. It's more like a wild card. And if you're already running a $200 million business uh, that, and part of it relies on filling hotel rooms, uh, the last thing you want to do is like throw a wild card in that allows a bunch of nits to play from home and take all your customers' money. Yeah, oh, makes, makes a now, lot of sense. Now if they could have full gaming, they'd do it in a heartbeat. Craps, roulette, blackjack, all online, slots. They would do that in a heartbeat, but they can't. They're only licensed for poker, and taking the poker players out of the casino just basically decimates the casino. Um, and so here at the Commerce, uh, is it pretty? Uh, is it pretty much safe to say like you're going to find the best games, you know, Friday and Saturday night at like midnight? Is that like the prime yeah. time to find yeah. action? It's a prime time for basically the entire anywhere. planet. You yeah. know, uh, the difference between the Commerce and other places is there's two five ten games going, and three five five games going, and a one hundred two hundred limit game going and a 61 20 limit and, and what is it like 11 a.m on a monday yeah that's the difference with commerce right. friday and saturday is great everywhere but friday and saturday here is like another planet like on friday and saturday here we'll have at least five plo games at least six no limit and this is a random random what is this what month is this april mm, yep. a random day in april no tournament nothing no. and it looks like nothing like nothing special at all about the about tomorrow about this week in any way shape or form and yet, our Friday and Saturday night will look like the biggest day of the year for every other casino. And it's just a random night for us. All right, you've got to have some kind of a story. Because you've had, you've had the greatest stories. I know that you've had the story about the guy who, 
uh, who you made quad aces against, and he thought it was a jackpot hand, but your, but your kicker didn't play. Yeah. yeah. Do, you, do you got anything else like that that's happened recently? <laughs> Any crazy stories here at the Commerce? Because I know you've always got some of those things. I usually do have some crazy uh -huh. stories. Um, I don't know. I mean, I've been very mellow lately because... <laughs> Well, you're I, not on Twitter. I'm not on anything no. anymore. So what happened with that? I'm completely removed oh, from man. society that's, that's at this so point. so disappointing. Like, I'm not, I'm not, I sold my shares in Live at the Bike. I basically have nothing to do with Live at the Bike anymore. Other than they owe me some money. So as long as they pay me the last little bit of money they owe me, I'll have nothing to do with them. That was the only reason I watched the show was when you were on that damn well, show. <laughs> whatever. They're doing their thing. Yeah. I'm in support of the honor, talent at Live at the Bike. I'm in support of the back room talent whatever i don't know what the fuck they're doing anyway i got thrown off twitter by well first i got thrown off twitter twice the first time was by this is sort of an interesting story maybe not it was by this guy named ricky vaughn who now it comes out as like this like well-known white supremacist he told all of his followers to complain about me at the same time and they did and it like hit it like a tripwire at twitter and just like zonked my account but then once they found out that what he was up to, they, they reinstated my account. But then... A white supremacist. Yes, his name's Ricky Vaughn. It's a big deal. It was, in wow. like, it was on like all the news channels and stuff. Oh my God. And then, recently, I got kicked off by Zionists. And fucking Zionists are insane. So, but the Zionists, all, they all ganged up on me and they all complained about me. And, and then Twitter kicked me off for, they said, targeted harassment. <laughs> Wow. So this time, I think I really am off because the Zionists are much more powerful than the white supremacists, even though they they share basically all the same views. Um, some for some reason, being a Zionist and being a, a complete racist, homophobic piece of shit is allowed. Um, so I'm off all social media. I'm off live at the bike. I'm off of everything. I'm not doing anything right now. I'm just all I do is play poker. I guess I'm just like entering the quiet late stages of my life. And, oh, and by the way, the trooper, is, mm. is he, he's a guy who, uh, who's done this thing too. His is a little bit different. It's not as much poker-based. Uh, poker it's more right. entertainment-based. But I was going to throw that out there as a trivia question to the viewers of this vlog. What do me and the trooper have in common? We've both co-hosted Poker Sesh. Oh, that's true. You. That's true. Yep. The old Poker Sesh. Mm. Poker Sesh might come back, by the way. Who knows? But right now, everything's on hiatus. Yeah, I've told you, if you need a co-host, oh, I'd love I'm in. Unfortunately, I don't live here. I wish I did. But uh, <laughs> we'd have to Skype it or something. But if you do need that, uh, I, I am at your service, my if, friend. If, it, if, this, if Poker Sesh comes back, you'll be my first choice. Absolutely. All right. Abe Lyman, legend of LA cash game action, joining us here on the vlog.